Hello again, everybody. Another typical University of Miami, University of Florida game uh, up in Gainesville. 17-14 was the final score. The Gators coming out ahead. And Coach, I guess uh, the question is, what, what were your impressions of, uh, of the game? Well, number one, it was a great afternoon. It was a great crowd, and there was a, just a lot of enthusiasm there in the stadium. Uh, 72,000 people, most of them from the state of Florida, and they were uh, served up a very interesting and exciting game. I certainly want to congratulate Charlie Pell and his Florida Gators for the fine game that they played. They uh, were very intent, uh, really hustled and, and deserved to win. I also want to congratulate the uh, fans that were in the stadium because it was a very sportsmanlike crowd and uh, really uh, lent a lot to the game. Mm -hmm. We were certainly disappointed that we didn't play well enough to win. Uh, it was one of those days where we didn't execute like we should have executed or are capable of executing. It was a day where our young defense, uh, I thought, came of age. Uh, a lot of the young players that we had, uh, I think, played well. It's encouraging. And uh, probably the most disappointing thing about the thing was is that we didn't score when we had the opportunities to score. Uh, Mark Rush just dove over the, the top so many times that we felt that that was a codlock cinch, but uh, they'd made a good mm -hmm. play, knocked the ball loose. And certainly uh, Jeff Davis was kicking well, and uh, the fact that it slid off to the right uh, certainly didn't help our cause. But uh, our football team uh, is encouraged by a lot of things that happened in the game. If I look at it really analytically and not look in terms of who won and lost the game, uh, there's a lot of things that we can build on in that game, and that's what we have to do at this point. We'll meet this afternoon at 4 o'clock, and we'll start going over the game film, trying to learn from the things that we didn't do well and uh, see the things that we did do well and start building on that. Uh, I'm very confident that our football team will rebound and we'll be back in the thick of the things this coming Saturday. I think one thing you've got to uh, take under consideration is the fact that there are still 10 football games left in the season. Well, sir, sure, and uh, certainly the Florida game is a very, very important game for us and it's one that we desperately wanted to win. Uh, certainly the seniors wanted to be able to go out with the idea that they had never lost to Florida. But the next 10 are very important, and certainly the most important of all of those now is the Houston game, which we'll be preparing for very shortly. Okay. We will be coming right back, and we'll take a look at the uh, first half highlights. <laughs> 72,000 folks at uh, University of Miami, University of Florida game in Florida Field. That sets a new record because of the uh, new construction they've got up there. And a lot of them came from South Florida, at least 7,000. Well, I was really delighted to see so many of our uh, fans up there, uh, as you say, 7,000 or so of them up there. Our band was there, our cheerleaders, the Howling Hurricane organization was there in force, and I could see all the green up there in the, in the stands. So uh, I'm really uh, pleased that so many people are following our team. and really trying to encourage us and help us win. You know, I think we got to thank the University of Florida for putting the uh, hurricane fans right behind the hurricane bench. I think that made the uh, afternoon a little more bearable, as it were. I could hear them. They were right to the right of our bench, part of them right behind, mm -hmm. but I could hear them. And occasionally when I would turn around, I could see that green. And of course, there's a few down the end zone, too, that I could see, which also helped. Yeah. Let's take a look at uh, the first half highlights and see what they saw yesterday in the 17-14 uh, to 14 University of Florida win. Well, here we are. Uh, we received, uh, won the toss and uh, elected to receive naturally. Mark Rush is back, and that young, well, I guess he's not so young, but that walk on uh, field goal kicker, kickoff man, uh, is really uh, uh, had, a, Excellent. had a fine day. Here he kicks it out of the end zone, and we start from the 20. Um, looked right off the bat like we were going to get a good flying start. Uh, we start out here with a screen to Speedy Neal, and not executed quite like we would like. It's a little bit ragged, but uh, Speedy breaks one tackle here and then another and makes seven or eight yards and gets us uh, started down the line. Jim Kelly, uh, statistic-wise, didn't have one of his best games. I don't think the statistics were completely uh, to tell the story here. He had it right on the money and Rocky had it for an instant, but great, great play by their defensive backs, knock it loose from him, and we have uh, an incomplete pass. Here's Greg LaBelle, Greg LaBelle, nice punt, uh, good coverage. Ivory Curry uh, has it knocked loose, and David Dithart comes up with it, and we look like here we're going to have something going very positively very early. Mm -hmm. The trap here to rush, he's running strong, gets it down in there close. We had one missed assignment on that play that could have made the difference. A power off tackle play with Speedy Neal, and Speedy, I thought, ran better than he's run in any game before. 
he will get better, I believe. And here's where Mark dives over the top like he's done so many times, and we expect him naturally to hold the ball. They make a super play, good hit, knocks it loose, and that keeps us, keeps us from putting seven on the board very quickly. Wayne Peace had a fine afternoon. He uh, threw the high percentage pass, threw short passes to his tight ends and his backs, and occasionally the receiver. Uh, here's the only miscue he had during the game where he tries to go in the middle and Jay Brophy comes up with a big interception. You know, Jay didn't practice all week. He had uh, back problems and he got a little practice on Thursday, then came out and played uh, basically the whole game until he uh, hurt his uh, ankle, uh, had a twisted or stepped on, and we don't know exactly how bad that is at this time. Here we're going to Keith Cleveland, and Keith doesn't hold on to it, and that fine safety of theirs, Lily, comes up with the interception. He looks like a halfback here as he weaves his way down through our offensive team trying to tackle him. James Jones, I'm not sure whether he's going to carry it on this one, though. This is the uh, trap pass to the tight end that, uh, big guy. that they do so well. they got two big tight ends there that do extremely well. They fake it to Jones there, and that holds our linebackers and allows the tight end to get open in there behind it. So we're now into the second quarter. Nothing no to score. nothing. Same play, coming back again, tight end again, taking it down there close, 20-yard line. That's their other tight end. That's Malarkey. Mm -hmm. He's from Fort Lauderdale. He's a big, fine-looking player. <clears throat> this one, uh, Peace looks. Good scramble in there. Colbrand almost got him there. It's a you know, Wayne is probably uh, more dangerous when you flush him out of the pocket. Strong running here by Hampton, and uh, Knight takes it down in there close. Mm -hmm. We were we were really fearful of uh, Peace getting out of the pocket, and here he does. This is a design play. This is not a scramble, and here he takes it to the weak side naked and then pulls his way in for the first score. So the uh, Gators lead by the score of 7 nothing after the PAT. We go back to our old favorite, bringing Mark Rush out of the backfield on the swing pass, and we get the ball to him, and here's Speedy on the sweep from the fullback position, showing good speed, getting outside. This is a play-action pass that we thought would be successful. Their linebackers and ends did a super job of getting depth, and Jim doesn't have anywhere to throw it. it takes off running, and one of the aggressive youngsters is a little late getting there. Gets him for a personal foul. I was really pleased with the running of Albert Bentley. Uh, he's playing behind Speedy, and he's just a real tenacious guy that does all he can with what he's got. Glenn Dennison, one of our real sure-handed receivers, I think he caught uh, four passes in the game, and this one for the touchdown. Blitz coverage, and he's working against their strong safety for the touchdown. Now, this is uh, Jeff Davis's first kick at the field goal or at the field goal post uh, from the extra point position, and he drills it, mm -hmm. hits it well, and I felt real comfortable about him kicking at that point. So nice. Tight end again there in the middle of the field. Tied at seven here. Scrambling around, buying time, gets it out to his receiver. He uh, picks up a short game. We barely get him tackled there. There's an awful lot of time to throw. Awful lot of time with He's an excellent receiver. That's Dixon. He had a, he had a heck of a day yesterday. They've got uh, about six of them up there that are uh, championship quality, and uh, they'll go a long way with the passing game. That was Ganey on a 38-yard field goal, which uh, made the halftime score of Florida 10. And uh, Miami 7, so you go into the locker room, down by three points, and what do you tell the guys? Well, you know, we've been in that situation many, many times before. Last year when uh, halftime rolled around, it was 14-3. Uh, to 3 and we were able to overcome that deficit. Uh, we've done it time and time again. So we went in, regrouped, started looking at the things we had to do one way or the other, put in the final uh, second half game plan and came back mm -hmm. out to play. Mm -hmm. Score at halftime is 10 to 7, Florida leading the University of Miami. And do you have a second half game plan much like you would have a first half game plan? Well, we changed somewhat based on what we saw in the uh, first half, and uh, that's what we did in this game. I was very pleased the way we came out the second half. I thought we came out really hustling. I thought our offense really started putting things together. Our defense shut them down. and. I thought everything was really on schedule. Let's talk a little bit right now about the heat. It was 108 degrees in the direct sunlight, over 120 on the field. At halftime, did the guys need a lot of refreshment and a lot of cooling off to, uh, to come out there and be uh, refreshed for the second half? I'm sure halftime was 
a welcome sight for that. <laughs> well, it was, but uh, we take certain certain steps in these kinds of games. We always make sure that we've got a uh, extra set of jerseys and extra t-shirts, socks, and those kinds of things so that the all this weight doesn't uh, stay with them for the second half. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, second half highlights and see what we got going here. And University of Miami is going to start it off on what had to be uh, a very uh, pleasing sight for you, a 16-play, 86-yard drive. Well, this looked like the uh, offensive team that I was expecting in the first half and which we're expecting as we go along through the season. Uh, our offense should be... Uh, the most experienced part of our football team, and we should be able to move the football and in this drive with a little bit of uh, help from the officials. We uh, were able to sustain it for a long period of time. We start going underneath against the uh, deep drops of the linebackers with tight ends delays and uh, fullback delays. Here we're going weak side with uh, Keith Griffin on the weak side sweep and Keith and Albert Bentley both ran extremely well. Here just a quick uh, hitch out to Rocky. They weren't covering him, but it was one man. And here Keith comes back to the weak side, high stepping and taking it on down uh, closer in. This was a big play of the drive. Mark Rush on a swing pass against the uh, Blitz and uh, almost outruns the last defender, but uh, the youngster makes a good play, shows good speed, keeps him from getting into the end zone and then forces us to take several more plays to make the score. That's a gain of 27. That gets it down to the four-yard line. And now Keith coming back and really lays his ears back and I thought almost got it into the goal line. We come back to the same play that Mark fumbled on the first time, and this time he jumps over the top and gets it in the end zone for the score. And with the PAT, Miami takes the lead. Did you go back to him to build his confidence because he had fumbled over? Well, we have great confidence in Mark, and uh, we've scored on this play you know, time and time again, and uh, simply because he made an error, we're not going to get away from something that's been good to us for a long time. So Miami takes the lead by four, 14 to 10. We are still in the uh, there third are those, quarter. There are those uh, howling hurricanes, hurricanes back down. there. <clears throat> Here piece scrambles and Fred Robinson, who I thought played uh, a hard game. He's got a lot to learn yet, but he played hard and I think he's going to be a fine football player mm -hmm. as time goes on. This is a... Uh, Oh, what a <laughs> tough luck situation that was. Uh, Rodney Bellinger was in position for the interception and the possible score, but not today. Screen pass, and here uh, Speedy shows us why they call him Speedy. He's moving pretty good. If Rush would get out of his way there, he might have gained another uh, several yards. A runaway freight train. And this is Albert Bentley on the quick sweep to the fullback, and he's met by a host of tacklers there, and he lays his ears back again and gets what he can. Here's Jim. Uh, the original receiver there, of course, is uh, Mark Rush, but uh, they're doubling him, and he goes out to Rocky Belk on the comeback pattern along the sideline. One thing you have to be really pleased with is the offensive line. You look at Kelly there, he had all day to pass, all day long he had. They weren't rushing a lot of people, but like you say, we did have a lot of time, and... Uh, it was a tribute to the two tackles. We had K-9 and uh, Cooper at the tackle and uh, Moore and, oh boy, that's close. <laughs> <laughs> Moore and uh, Ward at the uh, guards and Bailey nicely at center. Davis Smith on a 31-yarder there by inches, it looked. Those things have a way of evening up, don't they, Larry? Uh, one, one time they hit the goalpost and ricochet in, the next time it goes over the top of the goalpost and that official has to make a decision. You're absolutely right when they say it's a game of inches, huh? Here they're moving down uh, fourth quarter, moving it down, and uh, this is right along in here is where our defense makes a good goal line stand or a short yardage stand, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, fourth and two here, and they go to the quick sweep to the tight end side, and we get good uh, pursuit and a lot of people there to stop him short. Excellent. Defense. Now this was a point right here that uh, I'm most disturbed about. Right at this point is where we should have had been able to take the football move it down the field and not have to have the defense get back out on the field again. They make their drive here that takes it in for the winning score and uh, a real good job of taking their time, uh, hitting short passes here, they hit the short pass and they get the long run. We had two missed tackles there that allowed him to get down here. And This is a touchdown play and we allow him to get outside and get time to get the ball to that big fine fullback of theirs and he makes a spectacular catch. Now a lot of Miami fans claim that, that, that he was not in the end zone. From the way I see it, I don't think he was in the end zone either. Which your it's assessment. a mute point. Uh, it's, it's seven points and uh, 
The officials are right there to make the call, and you and I are in a position where it's very difficult to tell. So, University of Miami comes back for their last shot. Less than a minute left to go. This play coming up, right? Well, this is a replay. Uh, no, no. Yeah, this is a replay. Excuse me. No, this is one to Mark Rush okay. where they do a super job of uh, defending it. Now we come up with third, third and down. three, and this is a uh, this is going to be the last time we were going to ever have a shot to get behind them. So we went with the play action. And we did get behind their safety, and unfortunately, Jim didn't get it out far enough. Now, I think the AstroTurf uh, makes our receivers a little bit quicker than Jim is used to on our uh, on our grass field, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as a result, they get out a little bit further out of his range than he's normally used to. Okay, that's it. 17-14 was the uh, final score. We'll be back right after this. Okay, this weekend in the Orange Bowl, it's University of Houston. Uh, very briefly, what do you know about the Cougars? Well, I know they haven't played, and I know they've got all their players back, and I know Bill Yeoman is a great coach that's been featuring the Houston Veer for all these years, mm -hmm. and they're going to come into the Orange Bowl with that Veer attack, and they're really going to uh, be looking for their first win over the Hurricanes in the three years of trying. Let me ask you, because they haven't played, that's an advantage to them because they've seen you against Florida, right? Well, it works both ways. I think the fact that they've seen us is, helps them uh, to prepare. The fact that they haven't played and we have gives us mm -hmm. an edge as far as uh, knowing what uh, we can do well and what we can't do well and what we can correct. So I think it balances out. Okay. That's a 4 o'clock start in the Orange Bowl uh, coming up uh, this, uh, this Saturday in the Orange Bowl. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing the Canes get back on the winning crack. That'll do it for the, this week's edition of the Howard Stellenberger. We'll see you next week.